Um, thanks, Peter. First, I'm wondering, are there any members of Red Sox Nation in the audience? <laughs> oh, excellent. Well, um, uh, I told Peter that he's, he's the, uh, the Josh Beckett of this team. So if I get into any trouble, I'm just going to give the ball to him. Um, so first of all, I want to thank um, the ASPO and uh, Jim Baldoff, who was my contact. Um, they've done a, a great job, and they're doing a great job. And also, I want to thank them for uh, creating this session, which looks at the city. And I want to suggest that for the future, in whatever uh, city that the ASPO has its conference, they could have a session on the future of that city, so the future of Denver and the future of Chicago, wherever you're going to go next. That could sort of be a, a running theme of the ASPO conference. It's just a su uh, suggestion. Um, Okay, so uh, on this slide here, you see the, um, the sort of the stylized uh, peak oil curve. And um, while Peter was talking, I, I remembered um, years ago, I, I wasn't even thinking of it till just a minute ago, there was a book called um, The Turning Point by Fritjof Kopra, by a physicist named Fritjof Kopra. And uh, he had a drawing in it, or an illustration, and it said, The Oil Era. And his timeline was like 10,000 years or something, and it was just a single line. It wasn't, it wasn't even a curve like this. And uh, it, was, it was a little um, sort of mental jolt. That was almost 30 years ago when I saw that. Um, so there's a futurist for you. His name is Fritjof Kopra, and the book was called The Turning Point. Um, a couple of things I want to just talk about briefly, we'll just go through these quickly are uh, the built trends in the built environment, which can be germane for a low energy economy, and, um, and also in the industry, particular, particularly for Houston, um, the, uh, the biomass chemical industry, which could be a substitution for the petrochemical industry. And I'd like to look at these things as opportunities, as opportunities for economic growth. Uh, we could have a conference called uh, uh, economic opportunities in a low carbon economy because there are a lot of people who are figuring out how to make money and uh, so I, I like to look at sort of the positive side of things so okay hit the green button fantastic um, so we're looking at we're looking in the uh, the built development here this is uh, this is a development outside of Boston so I'm familiar with it um, uh, it's an old, it's an old industrial plant, a, a paint plant. Um, it was a brownfield, deserted for, you know, 40 years, literally just deserted. Um, and now the technology and the interest is there to restore these types of structures and to create eco communities or eco lofts or eco developments. You'll be hearing more and more of these terms. Um, these types of developments have different sets of of innovations that are applicable for the place or for the existing structure. There's no silver bullet. Um, these types of old mills have very thick walls with concrete floors, so you have a lot of uh, thermal mass there. Um, they have large, large windows which wouldn't necessarily be permitted uh, in a new structure, so you can take advantage of that, which these people have done. Um, one of their objectives is to have on-site wind uh, to provide the energy for the entire facility. And I think you're going to see a theme there coming up where new developments will be sort of expected, if not required, to provide their own electricity. Um, they have a bunch of other innovations, and all these innovations um, relate ultimately to energy. Uh, so the one million gallon rainwater retention canal uh, it, as you know, at first take, you could say, well, that's an environmental innovation um, to uh, separate the, the potable water from, uh, from the gray water system, for example, to retain uh, and recycle rainwater. But at the end of the day, that's an energy innovation. It's, it's, uh, it helps with cooling. It, it helps restore the aquifer. It's less uh, money treating water that doesn't need to be treated. Um, so. Almost any innovation, uh, environmental, really ultimately becomes an energy innovation. Um, 
there'll be an electric car fleet at, uh, um, at these lofts, uh, which will be powered by the winds. All the units will have cross ventilation. There'll be community recycling. The, the concrete floors will be radiating heat. The, um, uh, at the bottom there, you see the picture of the model unit. So the units are for sale. You can go there and buy one. Um, so these are concrete floors, and they actually have the hot tubes running through the floor, the hot water tubes running through the floor. Um, again, in Houston, that maybe isn't necessary, but in Boston, something like that is necessary. And in every climate, in every situation, there'll be something unique. Um, in the top slide here, this shows uh, the part of Chelsea, which is the industrial ship channel area in Boston, where the property is. And this was, you know, abandoned uh, brownfield-like area. And I think there are similarities here with Houston or any other old industrial city that has these old ship channels. And, um, you know, you can, you can see the natural gas tanks. Well, okay, I'm going to try something. Okay. Those are the natural gas tanks down there. Um, so that's, that's Boston sort of petro industry. And um, a lot of cities are reclaiming their industrial waterfront. And they're going to start doing so with, um, with low, low energy solutions.